This son of a bitch has the Bill of Rights on the Declaration of Independence on fire on the front cover saying, get rid of this. And then he sits around. I mean, this is bull. But wait, I won't be invited to the coffee with Mr. Bobbitt if I don't agree with him. And, I mean, ugh, you ought to go to these events. I mean, the scum, the slime, the filth. And they're all real stupid and lazy. They work about two hours a week, and then they just sit around with their professor jobs, hitting on, well, most of them don't hit on the women. They just hang out with Bobbitt, prancing around. Look, all your crap's going to be swept aside. You're weak, you're trash, get out of America's way, filth. Hold on. I gotta settle down and cover this. I'll never get to it. And I gotta go do about fifty things. Is my is Mike here yet? <clears throat> For me to do that work, I'm supposed to end this here in a minute because I got work I gotta do. Oh, jeez. But I said I'd take calls. Let me just read through it quickly. Maybe tomorrow I'll do part two of this when I'm more settled. It just goes on for page after page. In Bobbitt's view, the current wars against terror provide a shrill wake-up call. Bobbitt's previous book, The Shield of Achilles. He was at a lecture called The New World Order. Explores the grand themes of warfare and state development, making his penchant, marking his penchant for the magnum opus, a nearly 700 page toilet paper pile, I would add, including, I read it, more than 100 pages of notes. Terror and consent follow suit, taking on a similarly big picture. If we want to defeat state shattering terror, if we want to defeat state-shattering terror, we have to get rid of the state. If we want to defeat state-shattering terror in the 21st century, Bobbitt writes, we'll need to have to transform the emerging constitutional order of the 21st century state. Get rid of that evil Bill of Rights. Specifically, we must stop thinking like a nation-state and start thinking like the market state that we are inevitably becoming. The nation-state, a constitutional order dedicated to protecting and improving the material warfare, welfare of its citizens, served the United States well from the mid-19th century to the end of the Cold War. But Bobbitt contends it's vulnerable to a new battery of threats. The Oh, it's vulnerable, so let's get rid of it. Just like, oh, the, the Internet's in trouble. Let's just get rid of it. We have our new one for you when they're killing it. The accessibility of weapons of mass destruction, which our government hands out like hotcakes to Pakistan and everybody else. The globalization of international capital, that's the bankers that run it all. They're the problem. And the universalization of culture, which the globalists run, have eroded the conventional borders that once legitimated national security. So they're the globalists, and their globalism is destroying sovereignty, so we've got to embrace more globalism to save our sovereignty. I mean, do you, do you are you not insulted by him talking to you like you're a first grader? What's needed is a constitutional order that takes its structural cues from multinational corporations. Oh, yeah. And non-governmental organizations. Yeah, we got to turn into that. Relying less on law, oh, yeah, and regulation, and more on market incentives, where they control it all. To expand people's options, <laughs> that'll take your options, such as market steps, keeps its finger on the pulse of consumer demand, advocates trade liberalization, is prone to the privatization of public works, we're bankrupt, handing over all, our whole infrastructure to these control freaks. Read the IMF documents that came out in 2002. Their words, not mine. We'll outsource many functions in similar rooms of political science departments. The, ch the change is referred to as neoliberalism. On the streets, it is known as globalization. Is Mike here yet? Is Mike here? Okay, ten minutes. Okay. All right, we'll go for ten more minutes because I got to get this done. I got like twenty other things to do. Oh, why do I even read it? Just look at the cover. Just look at the enemy. Look what that bastard. Look what they do. You know what this means, folks? When they put the Constitution being shredded on the front of the paper and say it's good, it means we're in a lot of trouble. They built death camps. They're putting frickin' poison in our water. These are some son of a bitches. You get mad at your neighbor if they park in your parking spot. You get mad at the neighbor's dog if it craps in your yard. But you don't get mad when a bunch of mad dog killers are building FEMA camp control grids, brainwashing police, banning protest, having door-to-door -door gun confiscations. This is life and death. These people are gonna, if you're lucky, just turn you into a slave. But most of us are dead. You can't serve them. You can't join them. They aren't going to quit. They aren't going to stop. They aren't going to back off. They aren't going to give in. Their job is dressing up in their little suit clown outfits and making you feel good at lots of academic meetings to keep the intelligentsia down and not aware of what's happening. 
Tomorrow on the radio show, I'm going to start it with this and just go over the whole thing again and read the second half because I won't have time to cover it at all. It just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And it's all about these bastards' personal power trips. It's all about how they get to be the boss and how they get to destroy America and set up a new system. And they just make me sick. They make me sick! And then these dumbasses, excuse me, send me emails going, I'm not patriotic, I'm criticizing the government. The government is run by the private bankers. The government is destroying our country. The government wants world government where no one can oppose them. God, a bunch of psychopath inbred aristocracy poisoning us, doing all this crap to us, laughing about it, writing books about it, putting the Constitution being shredded on front of the paper and saying it's good. I mean, they're just a bunch of bastards, man. But see, they got to sell torture of children. they got to sell destroying the Bill of Rights. It's who they are. They're now down to doing it. They're doing it right now. I'm giving each caller one minute. Dave in California, you're on the air. Go ahead. Okay, real fast, no rant for that idiot named Bobbitt. Good name for him, though, huh? Well, they call him idiots. He's not an idiot. He's a predatory son of a bitch that knows what's good for him and the elite. Right. Okay, well, He anyway. thinks we need to lay down and die so that son of a bitch can have a power trip. Well, we still got the Second Amendment, brother, and we still got the place to put the cartridges in, too. So, the heck with that. You know, just they can say whatever they want, but this... You know when the, all these just know being, this. Oh, we're just know this. Just know this. This son of a bitch, right here, University of Texas senior fellow Philip Bobbitt. If there's ever an enemy of the republic, that's it, right there. That is an enemy of the republic. He's on my list. Anyway, two things real fast. You had Steve Alton on last week, and he's setting himself up as some big hero of the 9/11 movement. I bought his book and read it. It's a limited hangout. At the beginning, he says it's a work of fiction, fiction, but on or about the year 2012, it'll be the whole peak oil thing. It'll be CO2 is killing us. Yeah, you need, to, you need to call into other shows where they haven't discovered this. I have, and I appreciate your call. I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, do it. Call into all of them. I had him on. I'd gotten the book. I'd read like a couple of chapters. I thought, oh, this is good. You know, it's fiction about government-sponsored terror. I'll have a guest on. Then I actually read the whole book, and it's global government, all uh, peak oil, uh, we're all dead, CO2. And then suddenly all these big names started calling me, saying, you've got to promote this, you've got to push this, you've got to get involved with this. So I said, I better read it. So I did read the whole thing. And I didn't want to talk bad about him because I don't want to hurt everybody's feelings. But it's like Jesse Ventura's gone public. It's out there, and everybody's saying, oh, don't talk about that. Don't push that as a way to wake people up or any of this. Let's just talk about the shell game, 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 the shell game. And, and, and it's just, oh, my God, it'll hit number one, and then everyone will talk about it. When we have the number one actress and all these people going public and all the, you know, the and, and so, yes, yes, I, I'm aware of it. And I just try not to end fight and try not to get involved in all of it. But I'm going to get Alton back on and just school him about all this stuff. He'll come on. And and, he's, and I've tried to, behind the scenes to say, look, fine, nice book. I don't agree with a lot of it. But uh, what's all this weird hype about it? I mean, it's really getting pushed, folks. Like, I've never seen anything be pushed. And uh, something, I don't know what the odor is, but I'm trying to examine and get the full bouquet. Uh, let's talk to uh, John in Michigan. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Oh, great talking to you. Good talking to you. What's on your mind? Oh, I'd like to talk about the capabilities of the intelligence community and how we can have more power over them uh, as long as we uh, come up with plans to overcome them, I mean, they are scum. We do have power over them. We just need to realize it and use the, the power that we have to defeat them. I mean, you know the capabilities that they have. Yeah, they're a bunch of pieces of filth, a bunch of know-it-all uh, uh, book bookworms who think they know it all, who were taught communism in school. Bunch of trash. Well, I'm talking about big capabilities like having quantum computers to be able to try to control us. Well, even with no, that's what they got. They got all these maps to try to pick how we operate, and they're a bunch of bastards, and I just hate them. 
Oh, brainwave technology to read our minds. Well, they admit they have that. That's in the Washington Post. I meant to cover that Sunday, Monday, and today. I'll cover it tomorrow, and I appreciate your call. I hear you. Well, what they have is quackery, where they go, oh, the, the scanner picked up you were planning violence. You have to go to prison. Forget guilty until proven innocent. Now it's guilty before you do anything. And they're just saying that's the new system. And Bobbitt's saying it's wonderful.